Here's a circa 1939 Zenith AM tube radio. This is a battery operated set that was marketed to rural customers who didn't have elect electricity. Most of these radios like this ran on 1.5 volts for the filament and 90 volts for the uh, B plus voltage or plate voltage. So I think we'll tackle this today and see if we can get it back in operating condition. Okay, here's the chassis removed from the cabinet. Not much to it, just your basic four tube chassis like what most of these battery sets were. There's your antenna coil, your two IF transformers, the uh, tuning capacitor, and unfortunately the dial string is broken so that will have to be restrung, but that will probably be the last thing to take place. There's the underside of the chassis. Doesn't look like a whole lot's been done to it. I see a dirt dauber nest there that needs to be cleaned out. Here's the speaker. It's quite heavy duty for a battery operated radio speaker. As you can see, it needs to be reconed, but that can wait until we get the chassis up and running. Now, the first thing we would want to do is check the continuity of the coils and transformers in the power switch, make sure all the vital organs are good. If they're good we can proceed with the recap and if they're not good then we might have a problem on our hands. And by the way this is a model 4K331 from 1939 and I was able to print up a somewhat usable schematic. My uh, printer decided to suddenly run out of ink but putting it under the magnifier I can still make it out somewhat and I've checked the continuity of all the coils and transformers and the off on switch and all that seems to be okay so I think we can safely now uh, start the uh, recap procedure. I've already got these two capacitors cut and loose which I had to take a loose to see where the wiring from the first IF transformer was leading to so I'll go ahead and replace those two first Okay, we now have all the capacitors replaced, so we're almost ready for a power test. A couple of things to mention. This terminal right here on the audio output tube socket decided to break off, but fortunately it left me enough of a stub to solder it back on, so I got by without having to replace this tube socket. And this coupling capacitor that couples the plate from the first audio tube to the grid of the audio output tube. As you can see, I had to splice on an additional lead because the new capacitor didn't have a long enough lead on it to stretch over there. And by the way, that was the only capacitor that had ever appeared to have been changed in this set. It had a 40s era Mallory cap in it. But other than that, radio looks pretty much untouched. Or should I say looked pretty much untouched. It's been plenty touched now. But okay. Let me dig up a power supply and run the smoke. Okay, I have the radio connected to one of those old-fashioned battery eliminators. This is the type of device that you would find back in the 40s and 50s to allow an old battery operated set to run off of 120 volts AC. And once I get this radio up and going I'll build a modern more uh, regulated power supply but for testing this should do okay. Alright let's turn it on and see what happens. and I'm getting absolutely nothing. So now it's time to find out why I'm getting absolutely nothing. Well, when I turn the radio up to test some voltages, I've got some static, so let's see what happens. Fine, um, well, how about that? It's working. Uh, for me, one of my greatest now, it's not working. I think the problem is the volume control. Let's try it 
try cleaning the volume control. Okay, cleaning the volume control helps. But we still have an intermittent problem that I believe I've traced to the audio output to. See, when I tap it, it loses audio. It's called Conquering the College. Admissions say 10 easy steps. Find out what those steps are when you pick up the book online or in bookstores or visit Alan. Okay, I just cleaned the tube socket pins on the audio output tube. And that appears to have solved the problem. I cleaned both the tube pins and the socket contacts itself using this contact cleaner. So I think we're making good progress here. Now circuit wise I'd like to go down through the circuit and test all the resistors and replace any that are out of tolerance. One thing about this old tube stuff is a resistor can be uh, often be uh, 10,000 percent out of tolerance and the circuit will still work somewhat. That's often not true for modern solid state equipment but anyway I want to double check the resistors then I want to replace this old battery cable with modern wiring that's in slightly better shape. In fact, you can see here the insulation is starting to crumble at the at the battery plug, so I want to replace that. And then I want to at some point have this speaker reconed. I could put a modern Chinese crapola speaker in here, but this is the original heavy duty Zenith speaker, and I'd like to keep it if possible. And then I'll have to perform the tedious task of restringing this dial, which is something that I hate doing with a passion. In fact, I've given radios away before just because the dial string was broken and I didn't feel like losing my temper over it, so I uh, but this one does look fairly simple in comparison to a lot of them, so shouldn't have too much of a problem getting it going. And then I want to touch the alignment up using my signal generator, and then it should be ready to go. And for the exception of one or two resistors, the rest of them are very out of tolerance and if they're left in place they're only going to drift higher up in value as the years go by so might as well go ahead and get rid of them make the radio perform better and make it a little more reliable here's a 68k ohm resistor that's reading 91,000 ohms so I would say that is unacceptable it needs to be replaced here's the new 68k ohm resistor and it reads 67.5 K ohms, which is acceptable. And there's the new 68,000 ohm resistor in place. And since we had the little fiasco with the broken tube socket connection, I decided to cheat and uh, attach the replacement resistor onto the existing leads of the original resistor. It's not quite as neat looking, but it can save you a lot of headache. Just the key is make sure you make a good mechanical connection and then solder the connection together. Okay, we're about out of time for this, so we'll call this part one. And we'll get to the rest of the restoration process in part two. But I think we're making nice progress here. Okay, thanks for watching and more to come later.